Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Character, I'm your host, The Faulty GM, and today is the fifth episode of OOC Talk, or Out of Character Talk, um, and today I'm going to be talking about dice and their role in my game. Ha! Pun. Unintentional pun. Mm. So, yeah, uh, before I get into it, like I said, this is just about how I personally use dice and their roles in my game, so I just hope you guys can appreciate that. That's just my opinion. Um, Everybody uses dice differently, everybody runs their games differently, and this is just my personal take on it. Um, if you disagree or you agree or you run it a different way, um, I'm always happy to discuss this in the comments. Um, it's possible that you guys use it a different way that could benefit me in some way or that I'm using it in a way that could benefit you and maybe we all come up with some hybrid system together. Um, so yeah, let's discuss in the comments. Uh, or on Facebook or wherever this video happens to find you and let's talk about it. Um, but with all that out of the way, uh, let's dive straight into this conversation. So the way that I typically use dice in my game is I prefer that when someone makes a dice a die roll, um, if I personally am telling a player to make a die roll, first of all, um, or having a player make a die roll, yeah, so I, I guess if, if, if I allow a player to make a die roll, it's because what they are trying to do is actively... Okay, so when a player makes a die roll, what they are attempting to do, something is actively working against them. Um, what I mean by that is, if a player walks into a room, right, and says, I want to do a perception check to see what's in this room, I won't have them make the check. I'll just tell them what's in the room. Because there is nothing actively working against them to see what is in this room. However, if they walk into this room and the room is plunged into darkness, right, and they can't actually see anything, or things have been positioned in a way where it's hard to maneuver without certain objects or things like that, then they should make a perception check to try to perceive what is in the room. Um, if they are looking for something more specific than the basics of what's in the room, right, if they are looking for... Uh, hidden objects or things again things that someone has worked against them to hide or has actively tried to you know deceive them then they should have to make the check to find that thing what I mean by that is let's say a player walks into a room right and they go uh, I want to they're they're looking for a book that they don't know the name of said book, but they know the book is in this person's personal library. So they walk into this person's personal library and they go, okay, I want to do a perception check, see what this room looks like. I tell them the layout of the room and they go, okay, uh, I want to do an investigation, shell, uh, an investigation check on these books to try to see if any of them match the description of what the person has told us about. I will have them make that check. And the reason I would have them make that check is because, in my mind, they number one, they don't know the name of the book, um, which makes it really hard for them to just, like, see it, right? And let's say somebody was like, it's a black book. In somebody's library, how many black books are there? So the check in this case would be that it wouldn't be a check to see if they fail. Um, this wouldn't be a, you know, oh you're going to succeed or you're going to fail kind of thing. It would be how long does it take you to find said book? If they have a description of what the book is supposed to be about, I don't doubt that they can look through, take all black books off the shelf, stack them up, and then each of them go through each book looking for details about maybe who the author is, maybe what the contents are about, or maybe it's supposed to hide an object in it, so on and so forth. And eventually they would find the book that they're looking for. Um, the other thing is it the other thing is that if someone has actively hidden said book or if they were being actively deceived so the person that gave them that information maybe it gave they gave them faulty information the book is actually red not black um maybe uh the person who owns this has secretly hidden said book in a place where the other books just aren't there right maybe they've hidden them in a safe or maybe there's a whole nother room behind this room in a secret wall that the book is hidden in um, these are things of which they would need to make these checks 
Um, these are the reasons why they would have to make the check again. They are being actively uh, worked against. Somebody is purposely trying to hide something from them. Um, this is the same thing with merchants or NPCs. So if the player is talking to an NPC um, and they are asking the NPC for help or aid or something like that, I will not have them make a persuasion or intimidation check or any other kind of dis like deceiving check, blah, 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 blah. If that character, if they are proposing something to a character that, that that is in that character's interest, right? So for example, if someone is hiring them and they go, hey, can you provide some aid or blah, 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 uh, while we're doing this thing, that person is more than likely going to uh, want to help them. Um, if they ask for more money, right? And this is just a regular peasant character. I'm not gonna have them make a persuasion check because there's no way that character is going to say no against such a threat, right? They might feel intimidated regardless of if the characters try to intimidate them or not. Um, now, when the characters try to convince someone to do something against that character's best interest, that is when a check needs to be made, right? So if you are trying to intimidate a character who is a warrior or a fighter, you need to make a check for that because that character might not be so easily overcome in intimidation. And again, it, it's all about what you're trying to get that character to do. It's not even just the act of intimidating them. If you try to intimidate a warrior or guardsman to let you into a building of which they were specifically told not to let you into, you will need to make some kind of check to convince them to move aside or combat will happen, um, right? So if you want to resolve something without combat, um, and somebody is actively, again, working against you. These guards do not want you to enter said library, right? Maybe you can bribe them, right? That might be in their best interest. If you say, how much are they paying you? They say, you know, five gold an hour. You go, I will give you 10 gold each right now to move aside for an hour. That's double how much you get paid. And they might go, all right, sure. You know, we'll let you in, but only for an hour, you know, and that just goes to speak on, you know, the role playing of those characters. But again, if they don't do that, maybe they don't have enough gold. Maybe these guards are loyal to this person. They're not just bought. They are loyal. You know, it goes against their honor. It goes against their reputation to just allow someone in, if, especially if you guys get caught, so on and so forth. If that is the case, that is when I would make them do some kind of social role before combat happens. Um, and again, that's kind of the thing, is that this is where I kind of put in realism into the, the point of my roles. So I probably have said this a lot, but it's going to be, I guess it's going to be like a much shorter video than I normally do. But again, the idea behind this is the way that I use my roles or use dice in my game is if something is working against the players, they need to make a role to overcome that opposition. Um, if it is something, if the players are doing something that there is no opposition to, they don't need to make a role. And typically the roles that I make the characters do are not... Uh, they're, they're not critical to what's going to happen. For example, if a character needs to jump over a pit and they fail that check, they might get injured when they fail, when they fall. And again, I'm, I'm a much different GM than a lot of other GMs. I want my characters to live. I want my players to survive. I'm very reluctant to kill them. Um, so unless they do something stupid of which they, they just have to die. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I'm very reluctant to just, you know, slip their throats and call it a day. So, yeah. Uh, that, that That's kind of what it is. So, let me know in the comments below and on Facebook or wherever you happen to find this video. Like I said, what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with the way that I use dice? Do you use dice in a different way? Like, what kind of system do you guys use? Um, if you guys have any other topics that you would like me to discuss, leave it in the comments and I'll try to get to it. 
Um, but other than that, yeah, have a great day, guys. See ya.